Time for a user request. Today we'll walk through on applying these two creative effects using Affinity Photo. Let's not waste time and start with the first effect. I'll copy the image and start a new document with this image by using the file, New from Clipboard, Menu. The first thing we are going to do is to separate the subject, which we can do with the Object Selection tool. Once our subject is selected, press the Refine button and from the dialog, select New Layer with Mask as our output. This will create a new layer with only our selected subject and hide the original layer. Let's turn on the original layer and add a black and white adjustment to convert the image to black and white. In the adjustment dialog, I'm going to lower the reds and the yellows to get a nice contrasty black and white image and then move the adjustment as a child into the background image. We now need a copy of our subject in black and white. We can do this by duplicating the masked subject layer and then use a copy of the black and white adjustment we created earlier. It should be three layers right now. At the bottom, our base black and white image. At the top, the black and white subject, and in between, the subject with color. To create the slice stretch effect, we need to group the top layer and add the live mesh warp filter to it. Add two points to the mesh from which the stretch will start. Let's also add a point to where the stretch will come together. Now, select the middle nodes and move them close to the last node we created. We can now select all three nodes and move them even further to the left to finalize the basic effect. Feel free to adjust them to your liking. As with most artistic effects, the devil is always in the details. So here are two quick suggestions. One, make a duplicate of the top layer and rasterize it. Use the smudge tool to smoothen the effect and add some shadows and highlights to the effect, which will make the effect look much better. As a second tip, create a new pixel layer between the stretched black and white layer and the color layer. On this new layer, use a soft black brush to paint shadows. This creates a sense of separation and depth between the elements. Now time for the second effect, which is a bit more tricky. We need to start with defining a ribbon. I already created three curves which will represent the elevated ribbon area. Let me quickly reposition them. In order to be able to use them, I need the three curves merged into one, which we can do by selecting all three of them and then opening up the context menu by right clicking. From the geometry menu we can either use the add or the merge curves item. This will result in a single curve in the layers menu. This single curve can now act as a clipping layer. Let me first give it a fill and then add a copy of the image as a child. We can now resize this copy to offset the image in the ribbon. Pretty cool. Once I am happy with the image in the ribbon, I am going to adjust the ribbon curve so that we get a nice composition. Think about how the ribbon should flow around the face. We now have the base of the effect. It is time to work on the details of the effect. First we need some kind of 3D separation of the ribbon. For this I am going to add an inner bevel effect to the curve layer, which will get us a white border at the top of the ribbon. I want to add another bevel effect, and in order to do so, I am going to make a group with the curve. This will now allow me to add a bevel effect to the group on top of the existing bevel effect. By applying a second inner bevel effect, we can get a thin line at the bottom of the ribbons. These two bevel effects already created a nice separation. To add more depth, I am also going to add the drop shadow effect to the ribbon curve. We need quite a bit of shadow, so let's crank up the radius and the offset for the drop shadow. To get rid of the unwanted effects, I'll group once more and add a mask to the created group. Using this mask, I'll get rid of the shadows that don't make sense. And also, let's do a little bit of a clean up on the ribbon beginning and ends. Right now, the ribbons are missing a shadow where they bend. I'm just going to quickly paint those in on a new layer. It's a bit of a hack, but it works. If you have more time, draw these shadows using curves. That looks much better. We are slowly getting there. To make the ribbon look more realistic, we need more shadows and highlights. I'm going to use a soft brush with white and black to paint in shadows and highlights, but for the left bend on the ribbons, I'm going to add a rectangle with a gradient to simulate the shine and the shadows. Once that is done, I'll use a large soft black brush to darken the right part of the ribbon. Almost there, one final step. To make the separation of the ribbon stronger, we can add a curves adjustment to the bottom image and make it darker so that the ribbon stands out more. Pretty cool. If you are happy with the ribbon and want to continue editing the image, my suggestion would be to make a copy of the group we created. Rasterize this new group and hide the original group. This way, Affinity does not have to redraw all the effects and everything will work smoother. Let's go back to the group we created. As we mostly worked non-destructively, we should be able to adjust or even reuse the whole group. When I turn off the image in the ribbon, we can clearly see what we have created. I can, for example, adjust it, but I can also easily use it with a different image. Okay, this is not the best photo for this ribbon, but you get the idea. So once you have a good setup, it should be possible to reuse it with similar photos. I hope you found this video useful, and thanks again for tuning in. 
Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave, and I'll see you in the next video.